rushed. A noble has some time, takes a shot down the right sideline, and it is intercepted. Miles Jones picked it off at the 25-yard line. Inside handoff trying to get through Curtis, and he is slung down. He'll lose two. Who else but Wesley Williams to make the play? Now tucks to run. He's in trouble. Johnson's got him, and down he goes. A sack back to the 48-yard line. Three-man rush. Has some time. Break it down. Rolls to the right in pursuit. Smith, he's got him. Sack back at the 37-yard line. Ryan Smith comes up big. Play fake, wants to throw, launches down the left sideline, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 48-yard line, and it's Pickett who's got it. A little of defense stifling again in the second half, second consecutive shutout. And for the second consecutive game, they hold an opponent to just seven points. As Mike Elko and company improved to 2-0 on the season, the Blue Devils take care of business against the Leopards. 42-7 is the final score. Listen, every year it's got a, each defense has its own identity, and I think we're still trying to figure out which what this defense is going to really be all about. Obviously, I think over two games we've shown that we can cover pretty well, and I think we've got uh, the ability to get our hands on a lot of footballs in the secondary, and that's something that obviously is a huge advantage for us and something that can go a long way. And, and you know, we've been able to pressure the quarterback a little bit. And, you know, and so I think as time goes on, playmakers will emerge and, and we'll start putting guys into positions to be a little bit more impactful as we start to identify who those guys are and what they're capable of doing. Go out there tonight, you bring fire, you bring passion, you bring energy, you bring physicality. Ready, here's the snap. Some pressure comes, picked up well. Over the middle, caught. It's Calhoun, and he'll take it in for the touchdown. Jalen Calhoun had four a year ago, and he's got the Blue Devils on the board first here tonight. Littered from the shotgun, has Waters to the right. Here's the snap. The give to Jordan, threw a huge hold on the left, steps out of a tackle, and takes it home. Waters rumbles in from 16 yards out, and it's 20 to 7 with the extra point to come. Jacquez Moore gets a carry running right, bursts through the hole, 30, cuts back left. Jacquez Moore is gone! Touchdown! 39 yards, and it's 27-7. It's a little bit too early to make these big summations, but obviously we've handled our business the way we wanted to. I think, you know, we've played some strong second halves, which is something that we really talk about a lot. I think we've done a good job uh, hitting some of our markers. We've won the turnover battle both games. Uh, we've done a really good job on third down on offense. Um, so we're starting to do some of the things that I think good teams have to do. But our challenge is, like every team across the country, is how much do we grow? You know, we talked a lot this week about making sure that we're growing every week in practice because that's what's going to happen to the teams that finish this year in, in really good spots. We're going through some things as a program that's a little bit new for some of these kids. And that started in the off season with a little bit of buzz and talk about who we were and then the hype of what the Clemson game could be. And, and then you come out of that game and you win it and that creates even a little bit more noise. And I think uh, our kids are really good. I think they understand um, what all of that means and, and really what it means is nothing in the grand scheme of things. And, and we've got to come out and we've got to continue to work and stay true to who we are and make sure that every Saturday we come out and play our best brand of football. And if we do that, we know we have the talent to become a successful football team, but uh, we're still a long way away from actually accomplishing anything in this season. Takes the snap with two. They will keep it on the ground running left. And a huge hole! Jordan Waters cuts right, 15, 10, 5, good night! Jordan Waters turns the lights out on the Tigers! The give will be to Waters straight ahead through the hole, surging forward inside the one. They're trying to move the pile, and he is in for the touchdown! The big boys up front took him in. Our, our word in the offense room was attack, and we knew from the get-go we was going to go out there and attack and play with tempo and move the ball. I think we did just that.
we talk all the time about as an individual like one of the things that you do is you wake up every day and you chase greatness and, and in doing that you can set internal goals that that ultimately drive you to be better and if every day of our life we're doing something that makes us better in some way shape or, shape or form i think that's how we should be and that's how we should live and so i think part of it is instilling it into our football program but i think some of it too is just instilling lessons in them for life beyond the game uh, and hopefully some things that they'll take away with from here with Snap it off the Blue Double 12. He looks like he wants to run now. Fires at the last moment, and it's caught. A touchdown to Chris Caracia. And Lafayette is an extra point away from tying it up. When you become a ranked team, I think you have the ability for someone to make their season off of you. And that's just something that's completely new to this group, and they haven't had to experience it. And so understanding that you always have to be on. Uh, you don't get bad days. You don't get off days. Um, you got to be locked in at all times because you never know uh, who's coming in. And, and if we play the game to the level that we're capable of and we control the things that we're capable of controlling, you know, then we'll be okay. But the second we start talking about, hey, we can play a little bit off this week or dip a little bit, you know, I think that's when teams get in trouble. Duke All Access is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness isn't about what you've done, it's about what you do next. By Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. And by Coke Zero Sugar. They say Coke Zero is irresistibly tasty. Does that make it the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. I need to try it first. Yeah. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. Can they handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Statistically, the world is losing color. But who wants a gray world when we could have this? Honey yellow. Peri pinkle. Indigo. Things stay the same when the same is where you stay. But in hundreds of Delta destinations, simply opening your eyes can open your world. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Wayne Carter. I'm a senior defensive tackle on the Duke football team. And today I'm here with Jay Billis. Today we'll be doing a little flip of the script here. I'll be interviewing him in 100 yards instead of 94 feet. So, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So first, why did you choose to come to Duke? I came to Duke because of Coach K. Uh, my first year here was his third, and I had never heard of him when he first called me. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with the idea of him and playing for him. So it, it was less about Duke. It became about Duke, but it was really about him. That's awesome. Awesome. So you talk about, obviously, you're very fond of Coach K. Do you have any memories here at Duke that stand out? Yeah. Um, the winning we did. Uh, was was a great memory going to the Final Four, winning the ACC championship, being a number one ranked team. But it was really the the caliber of teammate that I had, that they're my best friends, whether it's Mark Allery, Johnny Dawkins, Tommy Amaker, Billy King, Quinn Snyder, Danny Ferry, you name it, David Henderson. Uh, it's a ridiculous group of great guys that I've been blessed to know all these years. 
That's awesome. So I know you're a member of Screen Actors Guild. If there was a movie made about you, who would play you? It would be a, it would be a, probably a cartoon. Uh, but, you know, probably Ryan Gosling, somebody who looks just like me and projects like I do as a, as a star. That's awesome. That's awesome. I agree. So if you were to play football, what position do you think you'd play? Left out. <laughs> I actually was I actually was invited to training camp by really? the Washington Redskins, and uh, when they called me, I was very flattered. And then I thought about it and said, "You guys would kill me," uh, so I wanted no part of it. But I never played football, but a huge football fan, huge huge fan of you guys. That's awesome. And lastly, uh, can we get your hair care routine? My hair care routine is a wet chamois that I run over the top of my head. And it's really easy to take care of now, and I look the same every day, which isn't a, a positive. But, uh, but I miss the hair. The hair was pretty awesome back in the 80s. That's awesome. I believe you look great. <laughs> and that's 100 yards. I made it. <laughs> Jay Bills was here the other day, and it was awesome. Like, I got to do the uh, little kind of rip off of his 94 feet with the 100 yard thing. And it's also pretty cool because school knows, like, I have interest in broadcasting and stuff like that as well. So they chose me to do that. So that was pretty cool. But outside of that, his message to the actual team, I think, was just a message of competition, right, and competing. And obviously he's very talented, very accomplished. Like he's had a lot of success in his life. But the first thing he did when he came into our meeting was criticize himself. He criticized himself on what he could have done better as a player, uh, what he should have done better in certain areas of life. Just a whole bunch of things and kind of built his message through that. It really ties into the message that Coach Elko and everybody else on the staff are really trying to instill in us is that like when you show up, like the bare minimum is not enough. Like you gotta do the extra work, extra curls, biceps, bench press, like whatever it may be, like you gotta do the extra work to really reach your full potential and continue to have success and win at the level that we want to win at. So it was pretty cool to know that someone who has that success and has reached almost really the highest levels um, has that same mantra and that same mindset because it's not just, obviously we believe in our coaching staff, but it's different when you see something, a visible representation of somebody who's actually done it. You know, you can tell I can't wear this on the air. Uh, I'm an objective uh, observer of the game of basketball. And you know, to me, fair is not difficult. But uh, I'm, I played here, I went to school here. This means a ton. All of us in this room get to do some unbelievably cool things in our careers. And if you're not careful, you can start to think it's routine. Don't take special for granted. In my life as a, a broadcaster, when I first started, I would have killed everybody in this room to do the games I'm doing now. Every one of you. I am now where I've always wanted to be. And so when I travel around the country and I'm doing the Duke Carolina game, or I'm, I've got uh, Kansas, Kentucky and Allen Fieldhouse, or I go to Assembly Hall at Indiana, Pauley Pavilion at UCLA, is that routine? No. I'd be an idiot if I thought it was routine. So I take that as special as it is. When you put this on, man, you're the only ones in America that know what this is like. The only ones. And nobody knows what that's like but you. Treat it as special as it is because you have to take it off one day. And it never comes back. You'll, you'll get to wear this, but you'll have to have a little collared shirt like I've got. And it, 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 it's the gift that keeps on giving. So don't take it for granted. Because every day you get to do this, you know, it's not, hey, I have to go to practice. You know, I have to, this isn't a have to, this is a get to. Man, I get to do this. Can you believe that? It's unbelievably cool. So treat it as special as it is. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today, and, uh, and I'll be rooting for you. Everything that we're trying to do is, is create mindset in men, and I think that's a, a philo philosophical piece of our program that we never want to lose sight of, and so we spend a lot of time of it on it internally, but you know, there's also some people who spend you know, the entire year kind of developing messaging and, and ways to kind of enhance kids' 
perspective on how they think about life and how they think about football and how they think about greatness. And so to go out and bring in speakers this year, we were lucky and, and brought in some really talented speakers. Jay Billis came in, Ryan Leaf came in, Inky Johnson came in, and they just provide different perspectives for our kids on, you know, whether it be appreciating Duke, appreciating the experience they have, or just how to chase greatness in their life. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. People have trusted Reed's Jewelers with their life's moments since 1946. That's because we're family owned. We treat everyone who walks through our doors or visits our website as a part of our family. We have a beautiful selection of jewelry and watches for any occasion. We offer free shipping and returns as well as multiple payment options to make sure you find the perfect gift. See why people have trusted Reed's Jewelers to celebrate their life's moments for over 75 years. It's bow time. It's not just football season. It's tailgate season. And this season includes every kind of football. Crispy. Will you accept this leg? And everything that's not. Because it doesn't matter where you tailgate with crispy hand-breaded chicken and scratch-made biscuits. It's her! <gasps> you're not just tailgating. You're tailgating like a legend. It's bow time. <laughs> Head to Bojangles and grab your tailgate box today. Duke's New Century cries out for a university where the drive to discover is not hemmed by disciplinary logics. Where philosophers work side by side with physicians and physicists. Where nurses find inspiration in narrative theory. Where mechanical engineers team up with marine biologists or musicians. I believe Duke will continue to be that university together. Jamion Franklin get voted onto the Good Works team. I mean, what a huge accomplishment for him. And we've talked about this before, but it almost feels like it's coming full circle, my relationship with him. You know, seeing what he went through during recruiting, um, to then see what his college career went through, to ultimately see him flourishing at Duke, becoming a captain, and now getting voted onto this team. I just think it's, he's a tremendous kid. I think he does a lot above and beyond the game of football. He's dealt with a lot outside of the game of football, and it's, a, it's a just an awesome reward for him to get. What I'm most involved with is helping the Durham Food Pantry here. It's about five minutes from campus. Um, it, just, it just really hits close to home to me. Uh, growing up, I utilized food pantries all the time, and I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in now if uh, some of those meals that I got from them didn't get me where I'm at and get me fed. Um, I also get around to the, the Duke Children's Hospital, and uh, another thing that I really enjoy is going to the, the local elementary schools and reading to the kids. Uh, I know I remember being young and having a, a high school or a college athlete come speak or read a book for me in elementary school. It meant the world to me to see somebody who I aspired to be like to come spend time with me. So I really, really enjoy getting in there with the little kids, reading books to them, you know, high five and them, taking pictures with them, just showing them that, no, that this is the beginning. You know, if you, you, you keep your head on straight and you, you focus on what's important in school, that you could be in my shoes one day. So just relaying that message. And um, you know, any opportunity that I get in the community, I'm gonna try to reach out and like use my platform to help others. So it's really a uh, really good feeling to be getting out in the local community. Us getting out in the community is huge. I think as we try to build relationships with Durham and the community and try to make this truly Bull City and build this fan base, I think the more we're out there with them, the better that is. And then we've tried to do a lot since I got here. We're in the schools a lot. Uh, we've done a lot with the Emily K Center. We've done a lot with the Ronald McDonald House. We've done a lot with Duke Children's. I think getting out as much as we can and just being a positive influence on this community is huge. These mascots represent some of the most heated rivalries in college sports. What could possibly bring them all together? Everyone agrees on the best team in smart home security. 
CPI. It's bow time. It's not just football season. It's tailgate season. And this season includes every kind of football. Crispy. Will you accept this leg? And everything that's not. Because it doesn't matter where you tailgate with crispy hand-breaded chicken and scratch-made biscuits. It's her! <gasps> you're not just tailgating. You're tailgating like a legend. It's bow time. <laughs> Head to Bojangles and grab your tailgate box today. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. In the handle of extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. Duke Football 360 with Dave Harding, presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. There are plenty of highlights to talk about from Duke's demolition of Lafayette. We're going to focus on the quarterback play today, specifically the backup quarterback, Henry Bielan. He came in for Riley Leonard in the third quarter. Leonard was a perfect 12 of 12 passing. Bielan ended up being perfect 8 of 8 passing. That's the first time two quarterbacks have thrown for over 100 yards in an FBS game and completed all of their passes since 1996. That's nationally on the FBS level. Pretty impressive. Bielan didn't bat an eye, gets put in with the starters. I think the coaching staff was con very intentional in doing so, so he got some experience running with the one offense. Here he is on the first pass attempt of the day, finding Jordan Moore down the field. What I love about this He's poised in the pocket. Although it's his first attempt in a game all season long, takes on a delayed blitz, shows his athleticism to get out on the perimeter, keeps his eyes down the field. Look at the arm strength to throw while he's on the run and hits Jordan Moore for a 49-yard play. That's the longest pass play of the young season for the Blue Devils. Get the Duke Blue Devils right up along the goal line, and he runs in for a touchdown. His first score as a Blue Devil the redshirt freshman finding pay dirt. I love watching this though. Look at all of his teammates come over and celebrate. That shows that they respect him, that they're excited for him. And my favorite part of this play, in a few seconds, you'll see Riley Leonard, the starting quarterback, come into the screen, look at him, give him a little high five, great job. Those guys compete against each other, but they're happy to see one another succeed. And then this, the next series out, finding Jordan Moore again. That's a reliable target. Three of the eight receptions thrown to Jordan Moore, one for 49 yards and the other for a touchdown. Gets inside leverage on his defender, perfectly thrown ball from Bielan, and it's another touchdown. The Blue Devils, certainly fortunate to have a backup and Henry Bielan that's so capable, can come in with the ones, keep that same level of consistency and accuracy going despite their starter, Riley Leonard, not being on the field. You never know when you're going to have to use that and it's great to get somebody reps in Henry Bielan with all the tools that he has at his capacity so that he's ready should that time come. Anytime you play a game like that, the goal is to, to be able to play a bunch of guys, and it's an opportunity early in the season to get some of the depth guys in that you know you're going to have to count on at some point down the line to win a big game for us. And so, uh, you know, whether it's a guy like Henry Bielan who has to go out there and, and operate and goes eight for eight and, you know, makes two touchdowns and um, or some of the young offensive linemen that we're able to get out there and play or, or what we were able to do on defense, getting some of our younger secondary guys some snaps. I think all of that stuff is critical because you just know it's a long year and you know at some point one of those guys is going to be called on to play a big role in us winning a critical football game. And so that's huge. Here's the snap. Play fake. Wants to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Gets away from the rush. Now launches down the sideline. Caught by Jordan Moore. 20. Angles left 15. Dancing in traffic. He'll dive down to the two-yard line. 
49 yards and it's first to goal. Now from under center, it's Beelan on second and goal. Here's the snap, quarterback sneak. They move the pile and he's got a touchdown. The first in his career. And the Blue will stretch the lead here in the third quarter. It's 34 to seven. Plenty of surge. Get in behind the offensive line, go to the right side. The tailback is Jones. They will throw, looking to the right. Fires, caught, touchdown. The trusted hands of Jordan Moore. And the Blue will stretch the lead here in the fourth quarter. It's now 41 to seven with the extra point to come. Beelan and Moore have got a little connection going on. We had a plan going into the game, like in, and Kevin Johns and I had spoken about it, that we wanted to try to get him in before we emptied the bench. And, and we wanted to be able to let him run the offense and run the game plan. Uh, you know, and obviously we were able to get that touchdown in the third quarter that put us up 28-7. And, you know, we feel really confident in Henry. So it's not like we felt like we were in a drop off or we had to get a, a four score lead or something like that. We just wanted to get a nice comfortable margin. And if we could do that, then we were going to put Henry in there and we had all the confidence in the world that he would help grow the lead and he certainly did that. One is they're committed to growth. I think, you know, that was obviously the biggest question mark coming out of last season was with the success, would we still be a hungry group that wanted to improve and work? And I think they've shown us that. And I think um, if possible too, the chemistry and cohesiveness with the group has gotten even stronger. I think it's a group of kids that truly genuine, genuinely enjoy being around each other and playing for each other and spending time with each other. And so to watch them interact a year later uh, is something that I think is really special too. We've put in a tremendous amount of work for sure. And I think if you look at our bodies where we're at physically, we're certainly in a better place than we were last year at this time. And so I think again, we're a bigger, faster, stronger team. Um, now what we have to do is we have to commit, commit to the grind of the season, commit to working every day to give ourselves a chance to be successful and then go out on the field Saturdays and execute at a really high level. You know, those are the pieces that we'll find out here in the coming weeks. Thank you. 